Привет. This video is another combinational circuit design example, and I'm taking a different approach with it. Instead of having the slides that walk you through it in enti its entirety, this one is done more by hand, and I've had a few students suggest that they learn better that way, so they want to see an example done this way. So let's get to it. Our task is given to us as design a circuit with four inputs representing an unsigned binary number and two outputs. One output will indicate if the input is a prime number. And uh, there is some confusion or debate on which numbers are prime. So I give you the starting prime numbers there. And then we'd have to fill in the, uh, the middle ones as well. And then the other output will indicate if the input number is a multiple of four decimal. So the design procedure that we're using is shown here. First off, we want to obtain our specifications for the circuit. And that one is summarized pretty simply for us in the problem statement. Step two is to define the inputs and the output. So I'm going to define A as <coughs> our four bit number. And so what that means is there's going to be four bits called A2, A1, A0. And if, for example, they held those numbers, well, that would be the same thing as decimal nine. And the outputs, let's use X to represent the prime number and let's use Y to represent the output that indicates a multiple of four. All right, we will get to steps three through five on the upcoming frames. And then step six, we're not actually gonna do in this video, but uh, it's a simple process with the simulator uh, to actually build this circuit that we're designing here. All right, I have those inputs and outputs defined, and now we want to move on to the truth table. And I've started the truth table for us here. Notice that my input is named A3 through A0, which represents a coherent 4-bit number. And then this column here isn't required, but it sure makes it a lot easier to interpret what's going on. This is the decimal version of the number, ranging from 0 all the way up to 15. And so now we could go through and fill in the output column. So x will indicate if that input number is prime. So 0 doesn't count. 1 does count according to that definition. So does 2. So does 3. 4 is not a prime number. 5 is, 6 is not, 7 is prime, no for 8, no for 9, no for 10, yes prime for 11, yes prime for 13, and then no for 14 and 15. So that is our truth table column just for x. And then now we move on for y, which indicates a multiple of 4. 0 is a multiple of 4. So it's 4, 8, 12, and then all the blanks that I left in here, those would be zeros because these numbers are not multiples of 4. So we have our truth table complete, and then that allows us to move on to our Carnot maps. So here I've just replicated the truth table. Um, to make it easier to see, I did not fill in the zeros, but all those blanks represent zeros. I need two Carnot maps because I have two output columns, which means I need two output equations. So this first K map, we're going to define for the output variable x. And every time I see a 1 on my truth table, I need to fill in a 1 to the corresponding cell in the Carnot map. So at input 0, 0, 0, 1, I see that x equals 1. Fill in a 1. The next one I see at row 0010, zero, 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 and that lets me fill in this cell here. 0011. Zero, zero, one, one. 
zero one zero one. I have the KMAP filled in. Now we need to identify our groups. The biggest group we can make is this group of four. I'm also going to have multiple groups of two. So this group of two here, this group of two here, and then there's one more uh, that I'm going to take advantage of the wraparound. So this one is grouped with that one. Now let's try to identify our uh, product terms. We have got in this larger red group, a3 is always a 0. A0 is always a 1. Now we have a couple of blue groups. In this first blue group, A3 is always 0. A2 is always 0. And A1 is always a 1. In the second blue group, we see that A, A3 changes. A2 is always high. Uh, A1 is always low, and A0 is always high. Then finally, we have that wraparound group of two. For the sake of space, I'll actually write that product term out here on the left. Let's see, A2 always remains low, and then A1 and A0 are high for both cases. All right, that is our rather lengthy equation for X. Now for y, it's actually going to be much simpler. Uh, this first one is at row 0, 0, 0. Next one at 0, 1, 0, 0. The next one here, 1, 0, 0, 0. And then finally this one, 1, 1, 0, 0. And there's an obvious group of four. So your expression or your equation for y is y equals a1 is low and a0 is low. All right, with those equations, we then move on to drawing the circuits. And actually, I noticed that when I typed up the slide, I left out one of the product terms, a2, a1 prime. And that just goes to show it's super easy to make a mistake, to leave out one one when you're looking at a grouping or to write a prime where you don't expect to write a prime. So pay careful attention and this is where the logic simulator really helps. You build a circuit based on this and you test out the truth table to see if it actually functions. Okay, to draw this circuit I need three input switches. A3, A2, and we'll worry about why last because that one's actually quite simple to make. Uh, I notice up here A3 needs to be primed, A2 needs to be knotted, A1 needs to be knotted, uh, A0 will also need to be knotted for Y. So every one of these at some point will have to pass through a knot gate. First product term for X is A3 prime anded with A0. So let's draw an AND gate up here. And that is A3 prime ended with A0. So I need to make sure to branch out A0 before the NOT gate. And it connects up here. The second product term, A3 prime, A2 prime, A1. A3 prime, branch that down. A2 prime. And then A1 uncomplemented. So I need to branch that before the NOT gate. A uh, next product term is A2 prime, A1, A0. A2 prime, let's branch you. A1. And then A0. Next product term for X. It's given there. And that is A2. This one's getting uh, really cluttered, right? Thank goodness we have software to, to help us lay this out cleaner. Anded with A1 prime, anded with A0. And then all of these ORed together is what will give us X. 
So I indicate that there. So this fairly large circuit will tell us when we have a prime number in unsigned binary on those inputs. And then our equation for y uh, is very simple. It's just a1 prime ended with a0 prime. And for the sake of space, I will draw that up here. We've got a1 prime ended with a0 prime. One thing to note about this problem is that we had two outputs for the circuit. And so that means the same set of inputs feed into both of those outputs. Very common point of confusion I see with students is uh, they'll create two completely separate circuits for those two outputs. Don't do that. There's only one A3 value which needs to feed to both of these outputs. And that will uh, wrap up this demonstration.